I promise it'll be cooler in here than outside later on today. Um, so, uh, so after, after today, um, see you at the lake, right? Uh, well, we have a great service planned today. Would you stand to your feet? If you're here this morning and maybe you didn't know that we we're doing water baptism, surprise, we're doing water baptisms today. Uh, if you were planning on it, but you didn't catch me before service, if you would just come up and grab me during worship so I can give you some quick instruction. Uh, we'll be baptizing right at the end of the worship set. And, um, and if you came today and you weren't planning on it, we have extra towels, we have some extra t-shirts, and it would not be the first time that someone sat through the rest of the service wet. It's glorious. When you get to do it that way, I think it's even more gooder. Uh, because because it was just God moving on your heart. So uh, we're going to celebrate what God has done in our lives today. And then we have a special treat from our youth ministry today as well, celebrating what God has done. I almost want to give away what God did through our youth team, but they would kill me if I did it. So, uh, so you're just going to have to wait to hear how our youth mission went. But anyway, are you ready to worship the Lord this morning? This is my favorite part of the whole day because this is the thing that we do that God won't do for himself. This is the part that only we get to do and that is praise him. That is give him worship. And worship is, is demonstrated. We clap our hands and we sing and you can dance or if you don't dance, you can tap your foot. Uh, but whatever, whatever it is that we do, this is our opportunity to express our love and our adoration uh, and our gratitude for who God is. Do you have anything to be grateful for this morning? I don't know about, well, a couple of you do. I have a lot to be grateful for, and so that's why we worship. Would you just stretch your hands toward heaven with me? The scripture says that we lift up holy hands in praise to him. Pastor, why do we do that? Well, if nothing else, get the blood flowing so you can wake up. Uh, but there is a spiritual thing about extending our hands to heaven. So, Lord, this morning, we come and we just posture ourselves for you. Lord, we give you all of our thoughts right now, all of our agendas, all of our planners and our calendars and all of those things we lay aside and we give you our hearts. Lord, we give you our adoration this morning because, Jesus, you deserved it. All authority in heaven and earth belong to you, and, Lord, you uh, that means that you are in charge of everything, that you've got this, you've got our lives. And so, Lord, we come to yield to the one who has it all today in Jesus' name. Amen. Are you ready to worship, church?
free. Hell lost not the wine. I am free. I am free. Who's free? I am free. Hell lost not the wine. I am free. Oh, I am free. Oh, I am free. Hell lost not the wine. I am free. I am free. I am free. Hell lost not the wine. I am free. Search the world, but it couldn't fill me. Man's empty praise, treasures that fades are never enough. You came along, put me back together. Now satisfied hearing your love. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing, nothing is better. Show you my weakness, my failures and flaws. Lord, you've seen them all. You still call me friend. Cause the God of the mountain is the God of the valley.
us, Jesus. There's nothing better than you.
love that always finds me, always finds me. Your name. today we've come here to fellowship with the Lord of Lord and the King of Kings Father we lift you up we lift Jesus up In the 
Lord, thank you for who you are. Lord, because I came with nothing. And so many of us, we came with nothing. 
And all that we have is you and you alone. So, Father, I pray right now that you just minister to every person in this room. Lord, from the leaders to the worship team to the congregation. Lord, we came with nothing. But you're the one that puts everything within that we need. Lord, without you, there is no hope. Without you, there is no love. But with you, there is all things. All things are possible. Life is possible. Relationship is possible. To love those that hate us is possible because of you and you alone. So, Father, I pray that our hearts are turned to you, that our eyes are turned to you, that our spiritual knower is turned on. And we are in tune with you because you gave it all. And the beauty is we have it all. We have it all in you. We have it all in you. Amen, church. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap, a shout, a cheer, because he is who he said he is. And he will do what he said he will do till the ends of the earth. Amen. And well, you may be seated. Uh, if if you would like to be baptized in water today, if you were planning on it, if you would come on over and line up right over here, uh, Isaac, come on, get in. The water is warm. Uh, I learned something new this morning that if a guy from England says the water is warm, turn the heater back on. But it's okay. Uh, if, uh, like I said earlier, if you uh, weren't planning on getting baptized today, but if you're here and God's moving on your heart, uh, we have extra T-shirts and extra towels. Um, the water is warmer than the lake, I promise. Uh, uh, but uh, today would be a great opportunity. And listen, uh, we believe that water baptism uh, is a special thing. We don't take it lightly. Uh, we believe, uh, as Scripture says, that when we're baptized in water, we're baptized in the name of Jesus. And Jesus himself said that go, that we are to make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And when, and when we do water baptism, it is an outward sign uh, of an inward work. Uh, it's a demonstration, public demonstration of what God is doing. And the scripture says that when we're baptized in these waters, we, put to, we identify with Jesus in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. In other words, you go, you go in the old person, and by faith you come out believing that you're a new creature, a new life. We just sang about new wine. Water baptism is about stepping into this new thing of, of new wine. So, good morning. Here, would you turn and face everybody? Um, would you tell everyone your name? Eli. And Eli, um, why did you decide to get baptized today? I don't know. Do you love Jesus? Yes. Are you prepared to serve Jesus your whole life? Yes. Okay, well, that's good enough for me. Um, Mom and Dad, do you want to you come over? Pastor Sean, would you come over, student ministry pastor? Uh, I'm going to have you just turn sideways, and I'm going to step out of the way. Hey, and here we have some kiddos to watch Eli get baptized. So, church, this is a family affair, so we'd like to invite you to pray. We're going to pray over young Eli, and uh, we're going to celebrate with him today. Are you shaking? Pastor Sean said I wasn't cold. Well, let's pray. Summer. It's summer, man. It's nice and warm in there. Father, we just thank you for the young life of this awesome guy. Father, I just pray right now that his age doesn't determine anything. You do. Lord, that his future is in you and his future is bright. Lord, we, uh, we thank you for this young man's life. And, Lord, the dedication that he's making to you. And we're going to hold his parents accountable that from this day forth, he will walk all of his days with you. 
And Lord, your hand is going to be upon him. You're going to lead him. You're going to guide him. Lord, you've called him out, not to just be like everybody else, but Lord, you've called him out for great things. You've called him out to be a voice among voices in the kingdom of heaven. And Lord, I pray that every word that he speaks, every place that he goes as he's growing up, Lord, will be honoring to you. Lord, I just pray that this young man's life, Lord, just take the next step, the next step. So Brad and Amanda, we're holding you accountable that this young guy is going to be is going to be a man of God. He's going to walk in the kingdom. Yeah, you know, Eli, the cool thing about this today is, um, yes, we hold your parents accountable, um, but you're making this decision today to be your own man of God. And, you know, the, the, the Bible says multiple times that God isn't a respecter of persons and of age. Uh, in fact, there were some prophets in, in the Old Testament that God called and they said, but God, how can I speak for you? How can I be used by you? I'm just a kid. And God said, don't say you're just a youth. And every time he promises to fill them with the spirit and every time he does, regardless of age, regardless of, of, of where they come from, God uses them mightily. And uh, God can and will use you the moment you make yourself available to him. And, you know, God has called you. He's put a little bit of boldness in you. He's made you a little bit different than your siblings. And there's a reason why he's designed you different. Because you're uniquely fashioned. And what God has for you is unlike what he has for others. And even as I referenced prophets of old, God has put a prophetic voice in you. And when you attune your ear, when you listen to him and you just be natural and don't try to be like anybody else, God will use you to speak his words and you won't even realize at first that you're doing it. You'll just know that you're speaking what God put in your heart. So Father, we just praise you for this young one. We praise you for this privilege and we just agree with him today as he makes this outward confession of this inward sign. In Jesus' name. So, Father, it's our honor to baptize him in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Okay, you're taller than me, so you have to stand down there. Just kidding. Uh, So this is Isaac. Uh, Could you tell he's related to the other one? Um, So Isaac, would you just tell us what God's doing in your life? Uh, He's just making me a better person, and he's helping me lead a better life. So are you ready to make a commitment to give your whole life to Jesus? old man. Okay, well, this is what we do. Pastor Shaman. Isaac, I was just, you know, earlier I was praying about you and I know there's times that you've questioned who you are. And God's saying you don't have to question. You don't have to question who you are, Isaac. I've made you who you are. You're not to follow the norm. You're not just to fit into the crowd. But I call you Isaac. And I'm calling you forth. Now is the time for you to step into your calling. Because you know, and I know, that you're called for greater things. There's a call on your life that maybe you've questioned. But don't question it anymore because God is calling you to be a leader among your peers. He is calling you for ministry. He is calling you to be the man that he's called you to be. Yes, you can have your personality and yes, you can be a jokester, but God is calling you to greater things. He is calling you to holiness. He's calling you to wholeness. He's calling you to be bold 
and to speak into those that you have influence on. You're going to be a man of influence. And there's, there's two ways that that can go, Isaac. You can influence people for the world or you can influence people for God. And God's saying, Isaac Dirud, I call you to be a man of influence for the kingdom of heaven. Nothing else but the kingdom of heaven. So Isaac, now is the time. Now is the time. So Father, it's our honor to baptize Isaac in the name of the Father, of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yes. I would like to introduce to you um, an old friend. This is Chris. Chris and I go back to about 10.15 this morning. Um, so I'll let him tell his story. Uh, the part I got was he's new to the area, um, looking for a church, thought he knew which one he was going to, and the Lord led him here today. And he came with a towel. And so, what's God doing in your life, Chris? Uh, I just, over the last year, I've had so much pain and disappointment and brokenness that I've always had a relationship with God, but I just reached a point in my life that nothing was working for me, and me being in control just led me astray, so now it's time for me to get right with God and devote my life to Him, because whatever He does is miracles, and whatever I do is spiritual, so He's got to do something better than myself. Church, would you stretch your hands out over our new friend? And Chris was feeling like he, he wished he had family here today. Come on, church. Does he have family here? Father, I just I just thank you for this man. God, I just I, I praise you, Lord, for the work that you do. Lord, on our best days, you do better. And in our best effort, Lord, you can you can always do more. So, Lord, I just, Lord, just praise you, Lord, that you even just supernaturally led him here. And Chris, in the same way that the Lord supernaturally led him here, he's going to supernaturally transform those areas in your life. What, what we could spend a lifetime trying to manage, the Holy Spirit can do in a moment. What, what we can spend lifetimes trying to, to overcome and to put down and memories and things that we, can, uh, that, that we struggle with, he can deliver us from a second. And the Lord would just, just from his word today, he's put this word in my heart. He who the sun sets free is free. Freedom from addiction. Freedom from bondage. Freedom from depression. Freedom from guilt. Freedom from anxiety. 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 There's something there, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah. Jesus said, all authority in heaven and earth have been given to me. And then he told his disciples, the same power that rose Jesus from the dead, Chris, is inside of you. Anxiety has nothing on you anymore. No more. No more. No more. And even at times, there's, there, you, you have just felt like there's been voices and, and, uh, and competing voices in your mind and in your heart. And, and oftentimes, those voices are telling you what you're not, what you can't do, what your failures are how much time you did because of this and, and how wrong you were and how undeserving you are. But the Lord says to all of those things, nonsense, this is my son. And if you're a son, that means you're a prince. And if you're a prince, you're not poor, you're not a pauper, you're not a beggar, you're not a prisoner, and you're not a slave. And so in the name of Jesus, I just pronounce freedom over your life. I'm just agreeing with the word, Chris. Freedom. Freedom. 
freedom. And I just command anxiety to be broken, spiritual strongholds, mental strongholds to be broken off of you, off of your mind, off of your life in Jesus' name. I just command everything in this man to come into alignment with the word of God. And Chris, as you begin to walk this out and align your life to Jesus, to his character, to his word, to his voice, all of those things will grow dim and fade away behind you as you walk out of new life. Because anyone's in Christ, they're a new creature, they're a new creation. The old is gone, but the new is come. So Chris, as a confession of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, it's my privilege to say welcome home, to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay, anybody else? The water's warm now. It, just body, just body. Okay, hey, would you uh, stand to your feet? Can we just praise God for just a moment, church? Come on, just give him a shout and a clap because he's worthy. God, you are so good. Lord, we praise you. We love you. And Lord, we just, Lord, we don't take what's happened here lightly. And God, we just commit, Lord, as the brothers and sisters of these that have been baptized today, Lord, we just commit to walk with them, to encourage them, to do life with them, to be their family, and Lord, to bring the word and to and to bring light into their lives. And Lord, we just ask that you would give us, their family, Lord, the, the anointing and the gifting, the ability, the tenacity, the patience, the endurance to do these things that you've called us to. In Jesus' name. Do you agree with that prayer, church? Then say amen with me. Amen. 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 All right. Pastor Sean is going to lead us to the next part. All righty. You may be seated. Man, is God good. Yeah? Yes. Okay, so we have some awesome youth people. I'm going to have, I'm going to have Cole come up. Cole's, uh, Cole's our main youth leader. So, yeah, he deserves one of those, right, buddy? <laughs> so we, we had the privilege of going on a missions trip with some awesome youth kids. Um, actually, they're not kids. They're students. They're students because they're, they're, some of them are smarter than me. Hey, if you went on, if you went on our trip, I'm going to have you stand up. Actually, come down here so everyone can see you. And then the camera. Wave to the camera as you come over. Okay, so there's a few that aren't here. There's a few that are. Yeah, they all want to see you. It's all right. We can edit all the goof-ups. And they'll get your best side. Which is your best side? Oh, you don't. But so we got, we got to hang out with these guys for the whole week. And for me, as somebody that's worked with youth for, for most of my ministry life, for me to see God grab a hold of a young person and they actually grasp who God is in their lives and there's this change that goes on within their thinking. Because how many of you know our thinking determines the direction we're going? You see, the biggest thing that God's got to contend with is that space between your ears. Okay, that's God's battleground. If you can change your thinking, dude, there's a whole lot of change that comes because your thinking is going to steer the direction that you go. So God got a hold of these awesome young men and women, and he started to change some of that thinking where they, they started to realize who they are in Christ, the call upon their life, That they're not called to be the norm. They're called to be extraordinary. They're called to go out and preach the word. And they actually went out on the streets of Boise and ministered to some people that needed a touch from the Lord. And some of these guys, 
some of these gals are going to share with you in a minute, but I want to let Cole speak also because I'm excited what God done in and through them, and you should be excited because they're a part of our body. They're a part of this church, this family. Yeah, so, I mean, to share a little bit of my, what I got to witness, is so we went up to Warm Lake to the YWAM base first for the first, like, four days of our trip. And it was crazy because, like, the weeks leading up to this, uh, we were going through a unit called Habits in, um, in youth group. And so we're talking about building habits and making your faith and, and prayer and all this, like, an everyday thing. And I asked them just, you know, how many of you guys would feel, like, comfortable just approaching someone random and evangelizing and then telling them about your faith? And, like, I said on a scale of 1 to 10, and I got about 15, like, negative 99s. Um, way off the scale. So we had like a lot of people that really uh, weren't comfortable. And then literally like the second day of camp, I get there and we had a few students that were sitting out of a game. Like they chose not to play the game and chose to read one of the books Marty gave us on apologetics. And so it's like, it just blew me away that we went from, you know, talking about habits and and everyone being afraid to, like, within three days of being up at Warm Lake and, and getting poured into at this camp, kids that are choosing, like, over having fun to, like, build their relationship with God, learn how to defend their faith. And then, the, like, the first day we get to Boise, we're running around and they're just talking to people. Um, we had a student. I won't say who it is. But um, they were, like, deathly afraid of talking to someone. Like, we went out there and there's like, anxiety just like took over and panic took over and it was like nope 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 we're not talking to anyone nope we passed like 15 people like nope 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 and then a few days later we go out to ann morrison park and that kid approached like three people just boom 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 and this is like you know we're only there for 10 days but just seeing the changes that happened and seeing god um help them grow in confidence and in their faith and just seeing all the the changes he's done in their life and the work we've done. We had a baptism while we were there. Um, Jordan here got baptized. <laughs> awesome. I'm so proud of everyone. Um, but I'll, I'll quit talking so they can tell you guys about camp. Okay, here's what I'm going to do because some of you I know you're looking like, well, who is that kid? Who are you? Uh, I'm Isaac. I'm Cora. I'm Daisy. I'm Kylie. Trace. I'm Trace. <laughs> I'm Faith. I'm Jordan. Samuel. Um, I'm Piper. <laughs> Her name's Piper. It's, I'm Piper. I'm not a youth, but I am Bobby. I'm William. I'm Christine. That is awesome. I'm going to have you guys sit down, and then I'm going to have whoever wants to share come back up so people can just be focused on the one person at a time. So if you guys grab your seats. William, do you want to share first? I just put you right on the spot. Yeah, come, come and share. You know, I, I haven't really got, before this trip, I never really got to talk much with William. But dude, so he was in a room with me. Just don't tell him all the naughty things that I've done. But it was so great to get to know him, his personality, and yeah. I, I'm, I'm proud of you, buddy. I'm proud of you. Yeah, you're going you're gonna to be, be great for sure. Come here in the middle so they can, they can all see you. Are you nervous? You are? Um, so this testimony is um, about this recent mission trip. And it started when I was five. My mom was um, praying at the church, and I stepped outside. And um, uh, I heard God's voice, and he told me that I would preach at age 12. And now on this mission trip, I preached at all the parks in Boise, and at, or at some of the parks in Boise, and at Warm Lake. And I feel like I actually heard God's voice. Did, did I hear that right, Mom? He's going to preach? 
I, I don't, William, we don't, we don't mind the age, but now I know you're going to preach. I remember when Cole right here was an eighth grader, and God gave me a word for Cole saying that Cole was going to be the one that would take over the youth. And here he is. God is working. So I'm going to say this to you, brother. You will be a preacher. God will use you to be a voice among your peers. You are going to bring the Word of God, and you're going to bring it with conviction. You're going to bring it with boldness, and you're going to bring it with power. William, there's a future in ministry, and that future is you. Who's next? Cora, I'm just going to start calling people if you're like, you, you said you wanted to share in a text message. I read it. Oh, Faith. Okay. Oh, I thought you was coming up, Faith. Faith, if you, mute, <laughs> if you move chairs, it's too late. Come on up. Um, hi. Um, so when we were at Warm Lake, um, all the, like, the leaders, the cabin leaders would give their testimonies. And that was personally my favorite part. But this one lady, Tori, she told her testimony. And everything she said, like, related to my life. And it was amazing. And I, I just couldn't, like, describe the feeling of when knowing someone else went through what I went through. And so um, on almost the last night, we had, like, a w prayer thing. And I went up to Tori, and I was like, hey... And I just told her everything. And it was, it was great. God was there. And he was in me, and he was in her. And yeah, it was so good. So. <laughs> Who's next? Okay, I will pull up the text message, and I'll put it on the screen for everybody to read, because I believe Cora said she was going to share. Come, come share. Yes. She's shy, but once you get to know her, she doesn't stop talking. So everybody knows you, so now you can keep talking. Okay, so my name's Cora. They call me Turbo. I don't know why. Um... <laughs> I remember, you know, back at YWAM, a lot of what we talked about was kind of this outreach of just being able to go out and just talking with people and connecting with people, you know, and getting to be able to share that gospel. And, um, and on our last day, we went out and we were around Warm Lake and we did that. Our, our youth group and some of the YWAM leaders went with us and we did that. And like, the minute we got out of the van, we're with Marty. He was, like, the head of the YWAM camp we were at. The minute we get out of the van, this guy comes up on a bicycle. He's tired. He's sweating. And Marty's, like, boom, on it. And he's talking to him. And he's just, it was crazy to see, like, this is real. And it's, like, it, it really does make an impact. And that was really cool just to see Marty being able to get in there and go on it and be able to talk with this guy, and he's like, oh, yeah, I've been biking all the way from Ponderosa, and we're like, whoa. And, but it was, it was cool, because, yeah. um, you know, he got to talking with him. He's like, oh, you know, do you have, like, your faith and whatever? And he's like, oh, well, I'm Catholic. And eventually we wandered off, but Marty was still talking with him, and it's like, like, I can do that. You know, we can do that. Even though we're just kids, we can make an impact, like, just in the streets, and that was really cool to see that. And so I think that was one of the biggest highlights from my perspective. Piper, I, I want to call you up. Do, do you want to? I'm not going to force you. I want to... Okay, so Piper's, just the awesome thing that's happened with Piper. 
You know how you get, you either get a guy that brings a girl to youth group or a girl brings a guy, and then, you know, you just get to know them. Um, so Trace and Piper have been together forever, four years. They plan on getting married, which is awesome. But just seeing Piper, you know, she's one of these people that had questions of who God was. Who's God? How does he fit into this whole thing? And just watching her interact with others in our youth group and then watching her this weekend, you know, I'm sad because he's to graduate. But dude, I see God touch this girl in such a way that if you ever question how far God can reach down and what he can do, it's times like that where you see God move in someone's life where it's like, you know what, God, this is why I'm in it all the way. Um, so, hello. So, as Sean was saying, I never really grew up in a Christian household at all, like ever. So, this was completely new to me, completely frightening, completely everything. But on this, on the YWAM camp specifically, I encountered three different people that remind me so much of my mom and brother. And they really did touch me because we had a specific time that we had to worship where all of us just sat around and fell to God. And the YWAM, one of the YWAM leaders, Haley, came over and, um, prayed for me and realized I have issues with my family. And as of right now, my family is living in two separate households. We still are happy and together and everything, but we're living in two separate households because my mom has to work down in the valley and my brother has school and everything. And yeah, it's just been a little hard overall. But that night during that worship time, I realized that God was actually real. <laughs> so, yeah. And the story time. <laughs> Guys, you had to be there to see it. I mean, it was so, so powerful. And this is, this is one of those things we want to encourage you as parents that have younger kids coming up. You know, I mean, yeah, we had some fun. We went to Roaring Springs, right, guys? We've done some fun things. But, man, seeing these kids put in this place where, where God and only God, I mean, they didn't have their phones. They didn't have their games. No TV. You know, and, and they're put in this place where it's like, hey, you need to be in, in touch with your family. They're, they're all family and you need to get in touch with the Lord. And the great thing is, all they had to do was say, I'm going to go. I'm going to go. It was just that willingness of, okay, I'm going to pay. I'm going to jump on the bus. I'm going to go wherever these leaders take me. And I'm going to go. And the great thing is, God showed up because we have a faithful God. If we say, yes, Lord, He's willing to jump in and say, yes, I'm with you. Ooh, Kylie, come on up. Um, okay, so this morning, uh, before service, I was told to share a simple testimony. And this is simple, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> um, but we were at Warm Lake, and one of the leaders, Marty, he was giving his testimony about how Jesus... Uh, became his best friend. And I don't know why, but like listening to it, it didn't really hit me. <laughs> um, but then like I was talking with my mom and we were talking and I realized that I don't really have like a best friend. I have a lot of friends, but I don't have like a best friend. And I'm making Jesus my best friend, so <laughs> yeah. Anyone 
else want to come up and share? <laughs> Bobby! Bobby! I will not make it through this without crying. Um, I've never met cooler people. Um, I will say, probably the hardest thing was we came back and last night I went into a full panic attack and I was like this close to running away completely and These kids are the only reason I stayed. <sighs> to watch God work through them honestly gives me hope that no matter what I go through as an adult, like, I've watched them battle with anxiety, battle with nervousness, walking up to strangers, interacting with refugees who didn't, didn't even speak their language, that, and they're able to pour their heart and their soul out to strangers, to a family in Boise that they've never met. I mean, it's just one of those things where it's like, if you never get an opportunity to see this, make it an opportunity. That is the future right there. They are sitting right there. This building is paper. That is concrete. And I never understood that until this last week. And it just... Yeah, so... You want to come up? This is Christine. <laughs> um, I don't know how I'm supposed to follow that. But on that evangelizing that they were talking about at the campground at Warm Lake, we broke into small groups, and I'm leading a group, and I had a full panic attack. One of my triggers for my anxiety is interacting with people, <laughs> I have people anxiety. Um, but I'm supposed to be there as a leader, strong, have it all together, you know, <laughs> as you're an example for these kids. <laughs> and I had a full-on panic attack. And so we sat down and we prayed and we just poured our hearts out to God and we all cried, all three of us, and said, this is hard. We don't have this, God, but you do. And these young girls who I was with just sat there and prayed with me through this anxiety. And God came and he met us like he always does. <laughs> but watching these girls overcome their own fears, helping me overcome my fears, and us to be able to go out and then encounter people and hopefully help them encounter God was one of the most amazing things I've ever done or been a part of. Watching them have that strength and that faith to say, hey, we've got you. God's got us. And all three of us to then go forward <laughs> and go talk to strangers about the gospel. So watching God in their lives, each one of them encountering God, was one of the most powerful things I've ever seen. So obviously, you know, we encounter God when we watch God encounter others. It was amazing. Trace? Hi. <laughs> oh, he's going to do it. Um, 
So one of the coolest experiences, I think, from this whole trip was the last day that we were there in Boise. We met up with the youth group at the sister church down there, and we did this treasure hunt um, where we broke up into small groups and we prayed for God to give us clues or hints about who needed to be touched that day. And so I was in a group with Sean, Piper, and then two of their kids, right? Tegan and Chloe. And we wrote down, uh, I don't know, maybe 10 things, but we had a, like two overlapping themes. It was dogs, specifically a poodle, and the color yellow. And so we decided to go back to the dog park because um, dogs was an overlapping theme. And on the way to the dog park, we hit three yellow lights in a row. And then the fourth stoplight, it had a green light to go to the dog park and then a flashing left turn. But we turned into the dog park because we're humans, so we didn't see it. Um, we walked through the dog park. We weren't seeing anything. And so we decided to go back and go across where that left flashing yellow was. And we go into this other park, and there's a big yellow caution sign warning about irrigation, so be careful, it's slick. And then the pathway was lined with yellow flowers on either side of it, all the way down, so we start following it. And then we s come to the end of the flowers, and then there's like these yellow leaves falling off the trees. And we come to this intersection, and there's no more yellow. We wait there for a minute, and we're not seeing anything. It's about time we need to get going back to the church. And there's this couple that had been following us, and they were walking by. So I asked them if they happened to have a dog. They said no. R right before they left, the lady said, we just had a dog. He just died. And I asked them if it might have been a poodle. They said it was half poodle. It was a Labradoodle. And so we stopped and asked if we could pray for them, and they said yes. Um, after we prayed for them, they were... They said they had been going through a very hard time. And they really appreciated it. So that was a very, very cool experience. Wow. Awesome. Um, anyone else? I think I'm going to share something again real quick without taking up too much time. Um, but one of the things for me is this trip... Um, for those of you that didn't know, like two weeks before we were supposed to leave, uh, we were supposed to go to Yellowstone National Park. And um, eventually, you know, things kind of fell apart or whatever, and we decided to change our destination for the second leg of the trip to Boise. And so, you know, I, you know, pulling my hair out, hunkered down, and like planned everything. And so we go through this, and I get there, and, and I'm, you know, this is the first time, this is my first mission ever, and it was First one I've ever planned as well. And so the whole time I'm sitting there with this mindset of like, okay, I got to do this. I got to do this. This is what I planned. This is what I planned. Here we go. And we get to um, a service project in the neighborhood. We're the two, we had two big service projects. We helped clear this like concrete wall of, um, of uh, like bushes and small trees and plants and stuff so they could paint a mural there. And then uh, the other thing was we helped River Valley Church out with their vacation Bible school. And so we get to the service project, and we show up, and, um, you know, we clean it, and we clean it, and we do all this, and it, it's super hot out, and it was hard, but it was fun, and um, felt really good to do it. And then we talked to the lady that organized it, and she said for months she had, like, 50 people signed up from the neighborhood to come do this. And then it came to the day, and two of them showed up. So if our group wasn't there, it would have been two um, older women doing the whole thing by themselves. And so I was like, wow, that's crazy. It's, it's, like, we're, it's like we're supposed to be here, <laughs> you know? <laughs> wow, awesome. And then we get to VBS, and they had um, a bunch of their leaders get stuck in Wyoming, and they couldn't come back, and so they were late. And um, so a lot of VBS consisted of teams of entirely leaders from our church um, helping out and running age groups and stuff. And it's like the day after, well, the day we were leaving is the day that Wyoming team showed up. And it's like, part of it was like, here I am, like, here, oh, I planned this. I, I wanted to, and I kept, I kept, like, claiming these things. And we get there, and it was like, slap upside the head, like, dude, you didn't do anything. Like, you just, you, you just said yes to what I put in front of you. And so that was, like, a crazy testament of, like, 
we were supposed to be here. God showed up. We showed up and just saying yes and letting God work through us and crazy things happened. Actually, the morning after we left, um, 23 kids at VBS gave their lives to God. 23. Um, so I just want to say that it was awesome. God was there. God showed up. Um, yeah. That's cool. Awesome. Hey, guys, how was the food? Food was awesome. I planned the food. Pastor Joe. <laughs> Hey, would you stand to your feet, church? It's, a, it's about that time. Um, what a fun Sunday. If you're a guest with us today, I just want to say welcome. I'm so glad you got to be here on a day where it's just family. It's not like this every, uh, every Sunday. So you got to come over to our house when we were having special dinner. Uh, next week will be, uh, will be a, a normal service. But could I just talk about normal for just a moment? Um, you know, so many times... Um, we put an expectation on what we think God is going to do. Um, we heard repeatedly during, during the planning of this trip um, a, a reference of writing things in pencil and giving the Holy Spirit the eraser. Um, I'm not so sure about writing in, in pencil, um, but I do know that when we give the Holy Spirit the room in our lives to do things, God does things. And, you know, we've been in a series, a Holy Spirit series. We're going to continue on uh, in, in the next couple weeks. And really all it comes down to, and my sermon today really simply had to, has to do with making ourselves available to God so God can reveal himself. Because it's, it's all about God um, getting the glory, right, church? And so today you got to witness some people who God is moving on their hearts, young and older, um, getting baptized in water as part of their uh, part of their their journey and today you got to see some young people share what God did in their lives and we we heard some little stories um, I have I have an inkling though that there's parts of those stories that they won't be able to realize and tell till years down the road I remember some of some camps and some missions uh, in our in our younger years um, that where God did things and set us up, and it wasn't until even decades later that we recognized that that was a divine appointment, that God did something for us, that God did something to posture us for him to do something incredible in our lives, but also impact other people's lives. And, and if you are wondering, like, what was that all about, and why did I have to go through the food, and why do I have to, why was it hot, and it was inconvenient, there are 23 little souls that before our team went down there um, had a different destination. And, you know, if, if you saw a burning building, most of you would run in to save the occupants. And after you saved the occupants, you'd look back and go, wow, that was crazy. And God let me, God let me do that. And people would be like, yeah, that was crazy. But, man, that was amazing. And that's just saving someone from a temporary peril. But what happened here, young people, is you saved them from an eternal peril. And the, and the consequences and the things that, it just in that little act were just unwitting, and there are probably a lot of things that seemed unspiritual. And sometimes it's the least spiritual-seeming things that have the greatest eternal consequence by just being available. And so that's all I want to share with you today is what happens when you're available. I have a formula I've shared before he is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can think, ask. Another, another translation says, um, beyond anything we can imagine. And it's simply God's infinite ability plus your availability <coughs> equals limitless possibility. And what happens when you just avail yourself to what God wants to do? Let's pray. Jesus, we just praise you. We just thank you for this incredible day, this incredible privilege. Lord, we, we praise you, Lord, for those that, that chose to get baptized in the name of Jesus today. And God, I just, I pray that you would pour out your spirit over them, Lord, that you would do just mind-blowing, life-changing work in them, that you, Lord, would just continue to propel them into your, your destiny, into your, your purposes and your plans for them. And Lord, for our young people, Lord, I just praise you, Lord, that you are no respecter of age and that you can change destinies, you can change cities, you can change the world with anyone that's just 
available, and we praise you for that. But Lord, I just pray for the rest of us and those of us that maybe are feeling older and saying, Lord, what can I do? Lord, I just I pray that this week that you would reveal an area where you're at work so we could go join you, and that, and that your incredible greatness, divine orchestration, Lord, partnered with our availability, Lord, would change lives and bring glory to you in Jesus' name. Now, we have uh, Colby, who is our prayer leader today. If you'd like to receive prayer for anything, I know there's someone that needs prayer in their physical body today, or if you just want someone to agree with you in prayer, come on up. We have Colby and with some other prayer folks that would love to pray with you. Otherwise, God bless you. Happy Sunday, and we'll see you next week.